Great. Well, thanks so much, Chuck. I appreciate it. So in this session, I'm going to talk about integrating Algolia into native apps with Flyerflow. And combining these two services is particularly exciting because both Algolia and Flutterflow are designed to make app development and search design delightful and fast. So this makes a good pair. So my name is John. I'm the head of education at Flutterflow. And in this session, I want to do three things. First, I want to give you a quick 30-second intro into Flutter and Flutterflow. Then I want to show you the integration. And third, finally, I want to publicly commit a mortal DevRel sin in front of your eyes. So let's do this. First, Flutter. So Flutter is a framework for building cross-platform native mobile and web apps. And it works slightly different from other cross-platform technologies because it doesn't produce platform components like UIKit on iOS, but it compiles to machine code. So ARM, Intel, and JavaScript for web. Now, Flutterflow is a developer tool that helps you to build Flutter apps 10 times as fast. And just like Flutter is slightly different from other frameworks, so Flutterflow is different from other low-code builders because of a fundamental software philosophy difference. And that is that our visual layer is designed to be a low abstraction. So what I mean is that when you drag on, let's say, a column into your app and you inspect the code, and I'll show that to you in a second, it's just a native Flutter column, or you drag on a container and it's just a native Flutter co container. And so there's no things in the app that's like, move this to the right, or here's a section, because all we're doing is exposing native Flutter technology. Okay, so that's Flutter and Flutter Flow. So let's jump over and show this integration. So here we are. And what I want to do in this demo is integrate search into an Airbnb-ish app. So we've got a basic scaffold of the UI here. I've already wired up Firebase to this project. And so you can see just the basic properties that we have here. And so this is it. This is what all we need to get started with the integration. So we're going to jump over to Firebase here. And they've got these extensions, which are just prepackaged solutions for all sorts of things that you're going to need. And there's this great Algolia extension. Okay. So you have to go through here and there are just a few uh, resources that you need to enable in Google Cloud Platform. But because Firebase runs on Google Cloud Platform, you can just uh, do one click enables right here and you're all good. Okay. So here are the few configurations that we need to set up. First is our collection path. And I can show you that right here. It's just this root properties collection. So let's just put properties, beautiful. Next, we've got our indexable fields. So this gives us the option to tell Algolia which fields we want indexed in Algolia that then you can, in Algolia, of course, you can configure, do you want these searched? Do you want these returned? We're gonna leave this blank because we want all of our fields indexed. Next, we've got a for sync option, which is designed to mitigate race conditions. So it'll do an additional read to uh, ensure data purity. We're just going to leave that for now. Next, we've got an Algolia index name. I've already got an Algolia project set up, and the index is called Properties. Next, oh, only a few things left here. We need our Algolia application ID, and you can grab that from your uh, settings down here. But uh, if you... Uh, uh, you can just grab it also here from the URL, which is what we are going to do. Beautiful. Next, we need our API key. So let's come into our settings here and our API keys. And I've got a key set up here with the uh, proper permissions. Yes, I'm exposing this. This is a right key. So be careful with this. I like to live my life on the edge and see who can get there first, me deleting my key after the session or the DDoSers. So stay tuned. Uh, next, we've got a transform function. So what you can do is you can set up a cloud function in Firebase if you want to do some transformation on your data before it gets to Algolia. We're going to leave that blank. Two more options. We've got the option to fully index our current uh, documents here. So if you already have a collection and you're integrating it in, then you want to do this. And so we want to do yes. And then finally, we've got our cloud functions location. I don't want to dox myself, but let's just say I'm somewhere near Iowa. And that's it. You just install your um, extension 
and then uh, you'll be ready. So now we just need to hook up Algolia in here. So we can just come down to our settings and enable Algolia. And we just put those two uh, things back in here. So our application ID, search API key. And if you have multiple collections, you just enable it and you're ready to do the binding in the UI. Okay, so I've got this list view set up. This is a, um, a very performant widget in Flutter that's meant to uh, have many, many children because it only loads and paint the widgets that are on the screen. And so in this third tab over here, we've got the option to bind some sort of backend query. And so we've got this Algolia search option. We just select our collection, our search term. We don't want to hard code this, of course. We want it from a variable. So then we come in here and open this set from variable. This is our dynamic binding menu so that you can bind anything or do a transformation prior to a binding, everything that you would sort of expect. And we want to uh, bind it to our text field. So that's a widget state. It's this query right here. And we're going to do one other thing. We're just going to add in our default value when the page loads to star so that we can load the whole collection. That's just telling us that we're going to generate all these uh, children. And that's it. So we've got that binding on our list view. Now we need to bind our individual fields. So let's come over to our title. And once again, we've got our dynamic binding menu right here. And here we can see now we've got this Algolia properties document. So now we're not binding to Firebase anymore. We're binding to Algolia's representation of that data. And it's everything that we would expect. So there's our title. And we've just got a concatenation here. So we're going to add in that uh, bedrooms integer. Beautiful. I'm not going to go through all the bindings right here because uh, uh, it's a pretty standard fare. We're just going to take a look at this project, pulling out the Beef Wellington already pre-made. There it is. So maybe we just want to search for uh, something in Brooklyn. And we've got a comfy Brooklyn property right here. Beautiful. That's how easy it is to set up. But you might be thinking two things. One, okay, that's cool, but Algolia is a very rich search experience. Can we integrate any more advanced features into Algolia? And two, you promised us a public mortal DevRel sin. And the answer is yes to both of those. And that is, we integrated Algolia very early on in our product because we knew how important it is to have these very rich search experiences. So we just haven't had the time yet to upgrade our implementation. But that's okay because for all of these other uh, needs, we have a custom code module. And it gets even better because uh, earlier, a uh, few months ago, Al go. go Algolia uh, released their pub dev package that allows for this great integration. Now, pub dev is just a package repository with um, nearly 40,000 packages, just like NPM or PyPy. And so you can come down here and we've got this beautiful Algolia search package that we can use in our app for advanced functionality. Okay, so let's build this. So I've got this app here. And for this advanced functionality, what I want to do is I want to give some faceting and filter capabilities. So I want the user to be able to click on this icon and show a bottom sheet. I got that component right here. And just do this sort of filtering that we've all come to love and expect. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to just get a uh, global JSON uh, variable right here called action res. And so anytime we make a query to Algolia, we're going to write to that. And then we have that bound in our UI to this same list view now. So now it's bound not to a backend query, but to a variable that we've set up. Okay, great. So let's take a look at this code. So here in our custom code, we split it up into functions, widgets, and actions. And that's because we want our custom code to not just be sort of a black box that you run, but deeply and elegantly integrated into the developer experience. So down here, we have our custom actions, which is what we're going to use. Now, custom actions are just blocks of code that you can define that gets executed on any type of action that you want. So if you just come in here and in the second menu right here, we've got our action flow editor and you've got the trigger that you set up and then you define the logic down here. 
Okay, so we're going to need two queries. One, when the page loads, just to show that original snapshot of the data, and then any sort of filter action. Okay, so let's set up that first one first. Uh, here, right down here, we got our Algolia um, query all. We set up our return type. We've got our PubSpec dependencies, which is that Algolia package. And then we just write it here. It's very simple. We initialize our client and we're waiting the uh, response from whatever index you want. Here's our properties. And then we're just returning the JSON. Okay, so then we need to bind this code block and we want this bound when the page loads. So here we've got it on the page load and we are just calling that action right here. Once we get that response, then we just write it to that variable here. But of course, we don't want everything from the response, at least for our use case right now. So we're JSON pathing down into just the hits. Beautiful. And then of course, that's already bound in the UI. Okay, but we're here for the more advanced stuff, right? Okay, so when the user clicks on this icon, we are going to execute this logic, just showing a bottom sheet, which is right here. Then we've got our different filtering options. So we've got our bedrooms and beds, et cetera. And so let's look at that code. So here we've got our Algolia query. It's a similar thing, but here now we've got more arguments. We're initializing our client, and then we're just calling the search for hits method with all of our arguments and returning that JSON. Okay, beautiful. So let's look at how this is wired up. So let's say we've got our bedrooms here. Let's come down some housekeeping up there. And then we just have our query right here with all of our parameters. And we're writing it to that JSON object once again. That's already been bound. And that's it. So let's just take a look at this. So maybe we want uh, nothing less than seven rooms and perhaps, uh, let's see, a private room down there. Yeah, that sounds good. And there we go. This is the kind of house that I regularly stay in. Seven bedrooms, beautiful. Okay, but there's one other thing. So maybe you want to interact with Algolia through their REST API because they've got this beautiful REST API. Well, you can do that too. So let's come in here and we've got this API module over here. And I've got all of my API definitions in a Swagger file right here. So I can just upload that. And like that, boom, I've got that group and I've got all of my end points. So that's it. That's how to integrate three different ways to integrate Algolia into your Flutterflow project. I'd love for you to check this out at flutterflow.io. You can reach out to me and uh, I really appreciate it. Let me send it back to you, Chuck. Thanks so much, John. I think you've definitely made some new Flutterflow Flutter fans. Wow. Uh, today, um, you, you can you can put that on t-shirt, Flutterflow fans, but don't <laughs> try and say it too loud. Um, so I, I am always impressed to see the kind of the combination of the nice UI and then the Dart code directly underneath it, the way it kind of all fits together. Um, of course, my first question to you is, you know, you, you mentioned that the Algolia integration was an early one. We've got the kind of the meat and potatoes widgets in there. Are we going to see more widgets in the future? Yes, yes, absolutely. We're um, we're releasing uh, 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 very frequently. Our dev team is pretty amazing, and um, we've got uh, Algolia. Our our sort of V two integration is on the roadmap, so we're excited to get to that. Awesome. And we had a, a question around uh, CI/CD. Uh, does Flutterflow actually manage the building of the application itself, or are there CI CD components or automations to it? Um, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Can you say that again? Sure. So uh, there, I think someone is excited about integrating Flutterflow into their entire sort of development pipeline. And they're curious, does, does Flutterflow handle building the application as well? Yes. So a couple things. Um, one is we have... Uh, uh, native integration with code magic so you can deploy directly to app store play store um, and you can publish web app uh, we also have an integration with github so you can just push your projects over there which is a common task especially for our enterprise customers um, that uh, it'll be part of their ci cd pipeline to push to github and if they need additional features or if they want to uh, ship in some other way that's how they do it Cool. This isn't this isn't a question. I think it's more of a comment. But oh, Swagger integration is super cool. So I think you know building on top of standards, obviously, 
always like, you know, it's nice to have that that cool friendly UI, but it's nice to know that the stuff underneath it is legit as yeah. well. Yeah, we we try to the, the the way we describe it is, you know, for for let's say like 80% of um the developers work is fairly standard stuff, you know, so like API definitions and libraries and stuff like that. And so we're like, hey, let us take care of that 80% so developers can get back to that 20% of of real customized complex code. Um, and so let us, let us work with your workflow like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's kind of the, the core of all of this is we're trying to take some of the load off you guys and, and gals and, and make things a little bit easier for you all. And I think like Flutterflow, great example of that. I think the, the Firebase integration that you're mm -hmm. using, that's honestly one of our most popular integrations on the exchange. Although I'm sure Flutterflow is going to start jumping up those ranks now that we've uh, we've promoted it here. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, just all of these sort of pieces, you know, we, we want to make sure that not only are they easy for you to use, but they fit together nicely as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, John. We really appreciate it. Do you want to give that uh, URL one last time before you go? Yeah, absolutely. That's flutterflow.io. Uh, you can sign up for a free account and get uh, everything that we saw here. Uh, you can test it out and we'd love to, uh, love to hear your reaction. Awesome. Thanks again, John. Thanks so much, Chuck.